So my name is Lorena Santa Cruz and I have been set free and delivered um, from the bondage of New Age and what it was. Um, I was in it for, I thought maybe 12 years and looking back, you know, it, it was even longer and it was just that constant search of needing to fill, fill myself with a void that I, I didn't know uh, was, I was just missing my connection to my Heavenly Father and, and Jesus. Um, but the Lord is good and He set me free. Um, so I'm just going to tell you my story of, of what, how I even got into it, um, the deception that I was under, thinking that I was doing good and, and doing everything the right way and I was just letting get, getting led astray further and further deeper into Satan's world. Um, so I, I don't even know where to begin sometimes because it's, there's so much to it. Um, I, you know, I, I did things like I, I taught kundalini yoga, I was a yoga teacher for 10 years, I, I had done ayahuasca, I, had, I would go to energy healers, get reiki, I saw psychics, angel healers, I went to get my tarot cards read, I also did, you know, angel cards, I went to intuition courses, I just, it feels like I did it all, I had all the books and I was just constantly consuming, I was checking my horoscope um, constantly. Anything, anything and everything new age, I just would dabble into it. And even things that, you know, at the time were scary and something inside of me always, it didn't feel right, I would still do it because there was just this empty void inside of me that I thought needed healing and that these things that are being promoted as healing modalities and healers, I just went in, all in. So um, tell me how you first got into it. What, what led you to begin to... Okay. So, to be exposed to this kind of thing. Okay, so first off, I'm going to say that as a little girl, I had a relationship with Jesus and a strong one, I think. I had a very strong relationship with Jesus. I was raised Catholic, and although I was raised Catholic, I, I didn't enjoy the church going process. I Something never felt right about the church, but when I talked to Jesus, I always felt good, and I felt like I had a relationship and a connection to him always. There was always a constant dialogue. Um, and, uh, and then I, when I was 11 and a half, my, one of my uncles uh, radically got saved, and, and he had been in a world where, you know, it just, it was, it was, it was drugs, the deportation, jail, all those things. So it was very radical and he was very um, extreme about it and passionate. So my family, we would go uh, to support um, because it was so, it was, it was nice change to see that. And when I went and stepped foot into the church, I, I just felt the presence of, of Jesus even stronger. And I felt very connected to that. Um, I remember I had, uh, I wasn't even 12 yet and I had a lady prophesy over me saying that, you know, one day you're going to see you, you know, working for the Lord and I just, I, ha I held on to that but I did forget about it through the years. Um, anyway, so I, I, I would enjoy going but I lived in, uh, you know, maybe like an hour away so it's not something that I got to do often, it was just once in a while where I'd get to go and there was one day where, uh, and this is how, you know, the mental like some people have been hurt by religion, because this is something else that I've noticed with people that I've spoken to, but um, I was not even 12 yet, and uh, they were doing the tithe, I guess, something, setting up something for the tithing, and I said, I get an allowance, $20 a month, I was like, I can give $20 a month, and they made me sign a paper. And that was in January, and then you know a year went by, almost a year, um, and and my grandfather passed away, which was another horrible thing for my family. Um, it literally brought a, a depression over my extended family, like complete depression, oppression, like it was just it, everyone was a mess. That same time, got a phone call um, from that church looking because I had now owed like 200 and something dollars because I didn't give any money and I didn't go back. So my parents got on the phone and they were like, how can you ask our daughter for money? So needless to say, I was no longer allowed to go there and that became something that, you know, they just didn't even, uh, didn't talk about that. And then also witnessing this, this massive d depression in, within my family, brought a depression over myself and I didn't even know and I was 12, 12 and a half. Um, 
just going through things even myself like you know when you're coming into being a teenager and and it just depression hit me and I didn't even know it hit me and it came like on all sides you know my family was everyone had a depression my my grandma my aunt my uncle everybody um so that's when it started and then you know as I got a little older it it start you know even uh 13 years old and and I lost weight naturally and people started to say um, you know wow you look so good and I thought oh wow I should keep losing weight then and and then I stopped eating and then I you know my head started to hurt so much that I was like well I need to stick something in my mouth so I would eat something and then um, and then I would feel so bad about eating that one thing because I'm like well now I'm gonna gain weight and people are not gonna like me anymore so I started to uh, become like I went from anorexia to bulimia and just that was a battle that started at 13 and a half and kind of continued through my entire life so that was one thing I thought I needed healing from for um, high school you know I got into high school and that was that was tough for me because again I was already depressed and I didn't know it there was no you know I, nowadays there's there's mental awareness and all this stuff but back then it wasn't so I just had all this stuff and I bottled it up and I didn't tell anyone about it I was very isolated um, definitely thoughts of suicide would come in and I just wouldn't tell anyone about that um, in high school also I was I was quiet because I was shy I was I was super shy and uh, and that turned into you know people thinking that I was a, a snob and and so then you know I, I got uh, I'd get bullied um, I got jumped one day in high school it was a, I was in grade nine and I, I remember it so it, you know vividly because it was I would walk home with a couple friends um, and that day when I went to look for them it was like everybody knew and then they wouldn't walk with me um, and I was like, oh, this feels weird in my, you know, it just felt weird inside that my friends don't want to walk home with me. So when I went outside, I got jumped and I don't even know who hit what. It was just like, it was a whole thing. Um, so that was me at 14. So again, already depressed. This made me more depressed. And now I had anxiety about going to school. Um, and and it just, it, it I, I didn't, like, it was a whole thing. So again, this just put me deeper into depression, more anxiety, more isolation, because that's what I did. I isolated and I didn't tell anyone about my problems. It also brought up a lot of anger for me because now, you know, I had these, these emotions of anger just like inside that I didn't even know what to do with. Um, there was a time in high school when I even was cutting myself. Um, and you know my my mom ended up I think she called the school so I was seeing a guidance counselor that would help with that um, there was another time where I actually did commit tried to commit suicide I, I took a bottle of pills because I was just afraid that uh, I, did, I just was like I don't, I don't want to live <laughs> you know there was just it was one of those things where I'm just like I'm done I'm done and I and I took it, and then the second that I took it, I was like, oh, no, 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 you know, I changed my mind. But by then I was like, so my parents found me on the floor, and then my mom, you know, home remedies, she gave me some concoction that made me throw up. I was throwing up for two days, and my mom's own fear didn't take me to the hospital. So it was something that, again, is kind of like, let's just cover it up, kind of like with the eating disorder, because at 13, also, that was something that was seen. But it was just like, I was like, I'll never do it again, mom. That was what I would do. I was like, I'll never do it again, because I was, I was afraid. So if we never had to talk about it again, it just got put under the rug. So this, you know, these are layers on layers. Um, but my mom did see that, you know, like I was depressed, not, not well, not happy. So she had heard about a homeopath, which is a natural doctor. Um, and so we went to this natural doctor that was going to help me. And this natural doctor ended up uh, teaching me about uh, native, uh, like the native stuff and, and told me about like my spirit animal, that I had a spirit animal and that I had a guide that was always with me and she gave me the name of the guide and she said you need to talk to this guide all the time because he's always with you and he's helping you. So I was like wow and I remember that I would talk to this guide and she also gave me my spirit animal which was a giraffe and she's like you know anytime a giraffe and so I'm like okay and by this time I was like 15 years old I think so it was like I really grabbed onto it I was like because I wanted to feel good and I was like this is my helper this guide so I would talk to him so that was your like initiation that was like my yes that was like my spiritual yes yes and 
and in, not even knowing, right? Like I, I didn't know. I was just, I believed it. I was, I believed it and I just did it. Um, and then I got older and I uh, was in a relationship that, you know, uh, I thought would end up being marriage. Uh, it was the end of my high school. And, you know, it, it was very, it, it wasn't meant to be, you know, it definitely wasn't a relationship meant to be, but I was in it for a long time and I really did uh, think that we were going to get married. And at a young age, I, you know, I just always, that was the life that I thought I want, that I wanted that at the time. And I just assumed that was, was is what was going to happen. So um, he ended up having two other relationships within our relationship. One lasted for six months with someone I knew. And then the other one was for a year. So those things further added to my already broken self-image, my self-worth, all of these things. So I just felt awful about myself. Um, and... And yeah, so after, you know, and this, I'm already in my early 20s at this point, and there were moments where I went the other way, where, you know, I would go, um, I think, like, I had a period of, like, six months where I was going to clubs and drinking with with friends and just trying to almost, like, forget about that and, and be like, oh, you know, I, I still can be worthy by doing this, um, but I was so lost and so broken. Um, but anyways, after I found out that he, you know, this thing had been going on for a year, first of all, it was like something lifted off of me because I, I just, I no longer had that because he always made me feel like, no, you're crazy. Like you're making, you're making things up in your head. So when I had the concrete, you know, <laughs> the concrete evidence uh, in front of me with pictures, I was like, okay, now this is, this is it. This is good. Um, However, I was still completely broken inside. I just, with him, it was like done because I had that anger now. I was like, oh no. Um, but I was so broken and my aunt, who has been, since I was little, she's just been like my everything. Like I, um, just a really strong connection with her where she was like almost like a second mom and, and best friend and everything in one. So she was working at a clinic um, doing, doing some stuff and within the space that she was working there was another office that they did energy work, energy healing. And she was like, you know, maybe you should go. And so I went and I had a male healer and, um, and I never experienced energy work before and he you know I again I was very vulnerable at the time and thinking that I needed you know to be fixed and um, I didn't know what energy healing was so I didn't know that apparently you're not supposed to touch the people but he did right and again as a woman you're so vulnerable going into these situations that you're just like I, I was, I remember like lying down and feeling just uncomfortable, like very, very uncomfortable. It never at one point felt good. It never felt, it just was uncomfortable, but I was so lost that I just thought this is what I need. And I remember it was like a hundred dollars for one hour session and he gave me three hours, but only charged me a hundred. And I was like, wow, what a nice guy, you know, like so nice. Meanwhile, he was, you know, he would sit behind me as I was lying down and, and push my, my chest together. And then sometimes he would put his hand just right under my belt and say, oh, you know, there's something here, an energy blockage. And it just, I remember feeling like this doesn't feel right, but I didn't know any different. So I just allowed it. Actually, after my first session with, him ever that same night I experienced so sleep paralysis was something I would experience from when I was younger but this specific night it was the first time ever it felt um, like something came to me at night and was sexually trying to touch me you know like um, and well, you felt something in your room something came I, in my you room awake or half asleep I was half asleep something came into my room and started to touch my leg in a sexual way and I I remember trying to like get it off um, but this was after that first healing session and in my mind at the time I thought it was him I thought it was the guy that I had got the healing from mm -hmm. Um, however, being lost and broken, I continued to go to him another few sessions until finally, I don't remember if it was my aunt or somebody else that said, did he touch you because he touched me here and it, that felt uncomfortable. And then I found out, oh, you're actually not supposed to touch people when you do this stuff. So I stopped going. Um, 
But again, I was still broken. I was still lost. The eating disorder was, you know, it would ramp up and then it would slow down. It would ramp up and it would slow down. It was something that had a hold on me. And it was kind of, I guess, like my drug choice of something that made me feel better and that I could numb out with. So, um, so I would do that. And, uh, and I also, I worked with my aunt at, at the clinic. We did, um, aesthetics and stuff. I, I had my own job here, uh, as well where I did corporate stuff I was I was in an office and and then I on the side I would go help my aunt as well so one day while I was uh, my aunt said she had there's someone wanted to meet me and so a client who ended up turning into a friend um, could go to the other side and talk to angels and all this stuff so I had a session with her and I remember that session because she just told me so many things and left me in awe and I was just like, oh, wow, right? And all of a sudden I, I had like could talk to these angels and I could do that like, and I was like, oh, wow. And she just told me so many things that were so um, true that I thought, you know, I was just like, oh, wow. And you know, and here's and in your grandpa and this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, wow. Like she just, you know, and she could see dead people and talk to dead people. And this is a message from your grandfather that is for your dad. So tell your dad this. And I just was like, she was more like a medium. She was a medium. Yes. And, and, and she taught you to, to start to speak or to connect with these. Like yes. Dead, so she, uh, she basically was telling me, you know, your grandfather. So because I got sleep paralysis, all the time she said it was my grandfather that was coming to me at night she goes he tries to tickle you um, so I thought that my grandfather was the one that was coming to tickle me um, at night and needless to say it wasn't <laughs> but again I had to go through all these things to, to find out um, it definitely didn't help anything I was still you know depressed lost confused all the things um, and you know throughout my life uh, I would dabble into things like, you know, my aunt would go see uh, somebody we called Brujita, which in Spanish means witch, and we would go see her and she would read cards for us and then she would like spray this little bottle that was supposed to get rid of negative energy or she would run an egg over your body or she would do something, you know, I'd go see her or we'd go to a psychic or we'd do this or um, so there was a lot of little things that I would dabble with there, not even knowing that that was new age. Um, and then uh, I, so also because of the fact that I had an eating disorder, I ended up taking nutrition on the side part time because I was like, again, I need to heal myself from this. So let me learn how the proper way of eating. And something else that I wanted to do was like, well, you know, I, I ended up focusing so much on the appearance of my body that I started to work out a lot and, and I started to, I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to become a personal trainer. So I did these things on the side, still hadn't really, um, gone full in with that um, and and then I was in I remember being in a car accident and, and I had been working out a lot and um, so I hurt my body and I wasn't really able and that was something that didn't really allow me to, to do everything I wanted to do but it was an accident where at the time I didn't even take it like it was anything you know it was actually a pretty big accident and I got whiplash but at the time I was young and I didn't think it affected anything except that I'm like oh I can't can't work out for a week now um, but anyways that was a pain that would keep coming back so I would have to stop working out and then there was a time where I went um, I was I was dating um, I was dating someone and we went to to Mexico and we drank the water. <laughs> the first thing they tell you to do is not drink the water in the hotel, but we missed that meeting and I drank the water. So I ended up getting sick in my stomach and got a parasite. So I got a parasite and I had this pain here. Anyway, so I couldn't work out anymore. And somebody told me, you know, you got to do yoga. And they, I, that was something people would always tell me because I would go to these natural things. Um, I was also doing this thing called biofeedback, um, which was another really weird modality. And they were just like, you know, you need you need yoga. You need yoga. And people were always telling me I needed yoga. And it was never something I always, you know, I liked CrossFit. I liked working out really hard. And it, yoga never appealed to me. Um, but when I was hurt, I was like, let me go try it. And this was hot yoga. So it's kind of like, you, you know, exercise in a hot room. So you, you, you sweat. And I was like, oh, I like this. And um, again, being naive, um, the people that own the studio were like, you're so good at yoga. You know, we're going to offer a teacher training. You would be a great yoga teacher. And I was like, 
still lost. Like I, yeah, I had this office job, but I didn't like it anymore. And then I also was working downtown, but it was just like all these things. And, and I was like, okay. And then now I could add this yoga thing and become a yoga teacher. And that's going to be my thing. So this was what I thought was my introduction to actual new age because all the other things I didn't even consider that they were anything. I just thought that that was part of normal, like just normal, like everyone did that and everyone read horoscopes, like who didn't do that? So this was my first real introduction for me into spirituality um, because it was like a 30 day intensive, 10 or 12 hours a day, you know, you'd come in and, and I learned about Vipassana, which is like you come in and you're not allowed to talk or look at anyone until we have done our meditation together and then we could break that and start talking. Um, and I really got, the, you know, they teach you um, about the history of yoga, which is uh, this book called the Bhagavad Gita. And, and it is kind of like the Hindu Bible. Like that is the Hindu Bible. It talks about their gods and we're learning all about this. Um, and then, you know, we're meditating. And this is my first introduction to like real meditating uh, where I, I felt something like, you know, we, there's like 30 of us and we're holding hands and, and you could feel like something going through. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, and then, you know, just little things like that. Like every day was like something new, something new. And, and within this bubble, it, it didn't even feel like the outside world existed. And it was just like, oh, oh, wow. Like, like, what is this feeling? You know, um, and I remember one girl telling me, she's like, oh, she's like, we're spirit, we're on a spiritual high right now. And she was much older than me. And she said, she goes, when we leave here, it's going to, we're going to become depressed. And I was like, I didn't understand that. And she's like, because right now we're in this little spiritual high, we're all getting filled. But then when we leave, it's going to like hit us. And I was like, I didn't understand. And I just dismissed her. Um, and then sure enough, once this thing was over, yeah, I was a yoga teacher, but now I was like, well, now what do I do? Like, I, I, I just was, again, like lost and confused, but now I was introduced to books, to meditations, and it just piqued that interest. I started to buy books on meditation and started to um, just do more things. And then I ended up working at a yoga studio. Um, I got my, my like first teaching job there. Um, and a lot of them were Sikh. So they were interested in Kundalini um, because the, the Sikh religion, it, it, that's where Kundalini comes from. Um, and I had learned about Kundalini through the teacher training. Um, so that was something that piqued my interest, you know. Um, and, and now I was also listening to yoga mantras. So every time I taught a yoga class, um, I played these mantras that I didn't know what they were saying, but I, I listened to it and it would like hypnotize people almost like it was just like, oh, and sometimes you'd repeat it. And then I remember learning about um, in yoga, one of the gods and, and this is the God that breaks ox obstacles or whatever. And so you repeat this mantra. And so I would repeat it again, not knowing what I'm saying, just repeating it, thinking that, yes, this is the one that is going to break the, the, the obstacles in my way because in my mind, I had all these obstacles and I was like, I'm lost, I'm confused, like, you know, I'm still dealing with the, like, people don't know that I'm dealing with an eating disorder. It was uh, my dirtiest secret that I had that you I didn't still, tell anyone. You still, were still dealing with that. I was still dealing with that and, and you know, none of the stuff that I was doing was helping. Um, and so I thought I needed more. And then I, and then I got introduced to something else that was like, now, you know, it was into the new age, but I got introduced to the self-help. And, you know, this was all about kind of bettering yourself. And, and now it's about, you know, I could be a millionaire if I wanted to. I just have to put my mind to it and I can create this world. And, and so I started to listen to these tapes that were given to me and not tapes. I think they were like CDs at the time or something. And I, I would uh, I would listen to them and and then the law of attraction. it was the law of attraction, but I didn't know it was the law of attraction at the time. And um, anyways, then it was like, you know, 2012 hit and, and I was again like teaching yoga, but just so depressed, like so depressed. And I had hurt my body again because there was an incident where my grandma fell and my grandma was like very overweight. And I was trying, I, I went to lift her up with all my might and my body could not lift her up. So like I put my shoulder out, I couldn't even teach yoga anymore. And I was just, you know, just depressed and lost. And, um, and I met someone at the clinic, um, that my aunt had owned and uh, downtown and this lady, funny enough, she became a client because she went to see the medium that that was now our friend. 
so it's the whole thing of how things happen, you know, when you can see, you know, looking back of like how it was just when the enemy has a plan for you, he has a plan for you. So she was telling me that, you know, she's like, you're so young, you're so beautiful, like you need to go to Miami, blah, 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 blah. Like I have a place in Miami and like, you know, you should go, I'm going to be there during this time. And I was like, all right, I'm going to book myself a flight to Miami. And I had never traveled by myself before. I traveled a lot already, but I had never gone like completely by myself. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna go and do this. So I went there and this was again more spiritual. I didn't even know. I didn't even really know her. She just really sweetened up my ear. And plus I was listening to now this stuff about the law of attraction and I was picturing what I wanted. And I was like, you know, this Miami is just such a beautiful place. It's Florida, it's warm, it's all these things. So I went and it was like, that was 2012, the year. Um, and I remember this was like more into spirituality because now she who was spiritual and I was just you know coming into it as a yoga teacher um, and and still very new to everything she definitely had she's like 10 years older than me and had been in this world um, so she told me about a store called ninth chakra you gotta go here you can get your aura red you can get all these things so I made sure I got a hotel close enough to this place you know and I was there by myself so I would go there dabble looking at this is the first time I'm looking at crystals I never had you know any kind of knowledge of what they were I'm looking at all these books I'm like wow but I can't afford anything because again I'm like what am I doing with my life like I still didn't have my personal training business or anything I was kind of like in between everything and now I'm not able to teach yoga so I was like I just didn't know so I'd go in I remember I'd buy like the cheapest little little rock and I was like okay this one's for this so I'm gonna hold on to it and I wanted to uh to get I remember I wanted to get I wanted to see a psychic there and I wanted to get my aura read because this is what the, the my friend had been raving about um, and I wasn't able to, but I was able to book myself a Reiki session, which is again, another one of those energy sessions. So I booked myself that was your in. your first time doing the Reiki session? No, this is my, I guess my second, because the first time was with that guy oh, that sorry. ended up, you know, um, but he just called his energy work. He didn't call it Reiki. Well, this was actually Reiki. So I guess this was like my first actual Reiki Reiki session. So I went to do that and, um, and just also just a side note there was so many healers in between this already that i had gone to for all different modalities like the dowsing the feng shui the all these things i had i had already done all of it because i had pain i had this i had that i was just so lost and so searching but now it was like just i was getting my eyes open to more of this stuff so yeah, there i am in miami getting this session another male um, but he didn't touch me this guy, but he had this music on and I remember just being gone Like I was gone for this whole session where I was no longer conscious I thought I fell asleep. I don't know and then I remember waking up and I didn't know anything I just was like, oh, it's over um, So I don't know what happened, you know, I, I don't have recollection I do remember seeing some twinkling lights, but then I was what I thought was asleep um, And then again in Miami now I was alone and by myself. So what would I do? I would not I would, uh, I was doing yoga there and I was also, I would go to, like when it was really late, I would go buy myself like food and then make myself sick because again, like nobody knew I still had this dirty, shameful secret. Um, and I can't, you know, and I remember extending my trip. So now, um, the yoga studio basically fired me and, and. But let me ask you something before, after, after this session when you kind of passed out, did you notice any real changes? Like no. Nothing. Nothing. We just you passed out. I just passed out, and I didn't notice anything different. I didn't feel anything, except that I was believing in my head um, what he told me, which was, "Oh, you know, it was so magical, it was so powerful, blah blah blah." It was such, a, and I was like, "Okay, like this is this is something," and so I remember uh, thinking that I was like on the right path, sort of thing. And um, anyways, when I came back, of course, you know. Now I don't even have, I'm not even teaching yoga, which was the one thing I was doing. So now I, I'm more depressed. And so my friend came, came back and she lived in Toronto and she, you know, we became friends and it, it, it wasn't even like ever a friend, a, a, a friend, a normal friendship because she just lived, come, came from a different world. So she had a lot of money and she really wanted to lose weight. And I was like, that's my specialty. I, because again, I've taken nutrition. I've already, you know, I've transformed people's bodies. I was like, give me two weeks. I was like, and I'll change your body. 
and and this is something I'm still confident I can do because you could change your body through eating and through a specific way of working out where you don't have to hurt yourself. So she was like, okay, move into my house for two weeks. Um, and and I was like, all right, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do this. And I totally transformed her body. But she also, at the same time, from day one, it was like, you know, she had Wayne Dyer, who if you know about the self-help world, he was very big in that, Louise Hay and all of these, all of these things got introduced to me day one. So I, I got introduced to all of that and A Course in Miracles, which is like this fake Bible where it talks about Jesus channeling, that Jesus apparently channeled this book. Um, so got introduced to all these things. So I was doing my job of, you know, I was cooking and training her, which I'm very good at, but I was getting fed all these things as well. Um, and something else that, uh, that, you know, she was like, kind of like my motivational person and, and I just believed everything. And she lived a life that I was like, Oh wow, I want this life, you know? And she would always tell me, she was like, you're just like me. You're just like, I was just like you. Like you have to do all these things. Cause I was just like you. You know, here's A Course in Miracles, like, I was just like you. Um, and she's like, one of the things I remember so specifically because it, it ruined so much for me is that she told me that the root of all my problems was my parents and specifically my mom. So all of a sudden I had all this anger for my mom and, and, and she convinced me and she was like, you can't talk to them, you know, like you can't, you gotta cut them out of your life. You gotta, and really, like I was believing this. I was like, they're the reason that I've, you know, been a failure. They're the reason that I've been this. They're the reason I'm so messed up. They're the reason I have an eating disorder. Oh my gosh. And I just kept buying into that. And she would give me books to tell me, yes, this is your parents' fault and all of this stuff. Um, and, and this, and, that, and, and how did that change your relationship with your parents? It was awful. It was awful. I, I, you began to feel I really that. began to feel it and I got to see, you know, I'm so different from them. I'm, I'm, uh, I felt that I have was better than them, that I knew better than them, that, you know, I don't belong in my family. I was the black sheep for sure. And, and I was just the, the enlightened one. Um, and I kept, you know, going down that. And then at the same time, uh, this was also when my personal training business came to be. I got like one one thing and then led to another and, and it really grew because her, she was, so she was like a little bit of a, her friends were socialites in Toronto, executive socialites. So I had, uh, you know, my clientele was these people that were like running the city, like people knew who they were, some of them were celebrities um, and, and it, that got busy. Um, so my life on the outside looked like I was, you know, I was making money, I was doing good, but I was still lost. And also at this time, now I was introduced to all these, you know, affirmations from self-help um, mixed in with the new age and meditation and all this. So I was now listening to meditations from the time I went to bed to the time I woke up to any time I was just, it was constant meditating on YouTube um, and just filling myself with as much as I could. I remember I went to see these people live. Um, one of them, was, I saw Wayne Dyer live, I saw Louise Hay, it was this whole, comp, this two day conference. And I never realized, I, I remember thinking like, you know, this is, it was such a good thing. So it was supposed to be so amazing, so enlightening, so, so wow. But I felt so heavy and awful and sick. And I was like, what, why did not ever understood why that was happening? Um, and you know, they did a regression, like a past life regression. Like there was all these different healers and new age people from Hay House. Um, one of them was Doreen Virtue who, praise the Lord, she's someone who had, you know, books and courses and, and angel cards and she was saved by Jesus and she now is against all of it. And it took me a while to, because I followed her for so long that, that I didn't believe when she was saved and praise the Lord for her um, because she, was saved out of it and she she's someone with like a very big following at the time um anyways so i was just all into that feeding myself with that and you know again now vision boards came into my life because this friend of mine was like you got to do if you never done a vision board you got to do a vision board so i did a vision board and on my vision board you know i put like i wanted to live in the city i wanted to live in this place i want my kitchen to look like this i, I want to uh the, uh, my, uh, my fitness body to look like this and I just I did this whole vision board and sure enough things started to come true I all of a sudden was living you know downtown um, my business was was like I was so busy um, and I, I also was like okay one of my bucket list things was like I want to do a fitness competition so as I was doing this I started to train for a fitness competition 
Um, and again, so my, my eating disorder was something that would disappear and come back, disappear and come back, but it never fully disappeared. It would just change its form. So it would go from, you know, overeating and throwing up to just not eating anything or eating very little or eating super healthy, just very healthy, but I wasn't getting nutrients anyways. So I was training for this fitness competition and and ended up winning and i thought it was just all my visualizations my meditations every time i you know i'd go to bed i just remembered i was like okay i'm gonna do this thing i'm gonna do it um i ended up breaking my body in the process of doing it um because again i wasn't eating healthy and i was overtraining. um but i won i won and it put me into another world that uh i was kind of in and out of this world um and it was the fitness world where I, I it is another very interesting world to get into because it's all about the appearance mm -hmm. and 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 yeah it was just interesting to get into that world i won first place i got to meet the the somebody who owned this fitness magazine and right away it was like i was in that magazine right away i, I you know it was like a photo shoot all of a sudden i'm i'm sponsored by a protein company so i was doing all the like it just had all these things that on the outside you would think wow her like her life is so good meanwhile i was isolated i didn't really have like friendships or relationships with people um i was just burning myself out trying to to again like take care of myself and didn't have a relationship with my parents just it was like yeah no i'm good i'm good i'm good and would avoid seeing them i remember i was so like it breaks my heart now to think about it but they went one day to drop off i didn't have an air conditioner at my place and they went to drop it off and and they came to my door and i didn't open the door for them because again like it was a time where I just so believed this friend of mine and I wanted to have that lifestyle that she told me that I could have and she was like you can't talk to your parents she's like every time you talk to them it's like you're gonna go backwards and so I was just like I can't talk to them I can't talk to them and I would cut them out of my life for like a chunk of time and then come back but I always had this anger towards them and I was like well they're the reason I'm like this they're the reason blah 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 so that's a whole other thing <laughs> Um, anyways, so continued and again, I was so broken that I would see other healers, um, in between and, and now all of a sudden I'm starting to see repeated numbers come, you know, so, uh, lots of repeated numbers. I'm doing more meditations. Um, I started to go to a Kundalini yoga place and it was, uh, it was it was called I, I thought it was like something that was calling me you know i had to do this kundalini yoga and i i got into it and it was it was weird it was very weird to my like logical mind but there was something there was something that just drew me to it and it was i was like i need to do this um, and at the same time, I started to see all these repeated numbers and I was kind of freaked out about it because I would see them everywhere to the point where I wanted it to stop and it wouldn't stop. You know, it was like I wanted it to stop and it wouldn't stop and it scared me. What, what did you want to stop? Like the numbers, the numbers, I couldn't stop seeing them. It was like, and I didn't know what they meant and it just, and then I was like, okay, I'm just going to numb out and turn the TV on. Back then I used to watch TV and I... I would turn the TV on and it was like, call 444-4444 and I was just like, oh, even that, right? Turn it off and then it would be the time and then I would, it was just constant, constant and I felt like they were jumping at me um, and I remember I went to get a massage once and then this girl was like telling me about this healer that she went to and I was like, I gotta go see that healer. Um, and something else that was starting to happen at this time was now I, I had I definitely had a meditation practice, but not on my own. I was doing all these guided meditations from YouTube. Um, and every time I closed my eyes, I would start to see the color purple with faces coming in and going out. And, I, and so I was like, I need to see someone to help me to know what this is. So I went to this healer lady that, uh, you know, she was like a psychic, but also did like therapy for because again I still was battling this eating disorder and nobody knew about it so I went to see her and she when she started with me said you know you are just like me like you can do everything that I do and she was teaching an intuition course so I was like let's sign up for this and actually I signed up with my aunt and we went to this intuition course and this was the first time you know I got to be that psychic person like pretend and play with it and 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 just it, this whole other realm of you know new age that i didn't even know about 
Um, and she kept telling me that I was just like her, that I had these things, that I was very sensitive, you know, and then that I could, if I could, I could feel someone and, and this and anyways, that was that. And I would keep seeing her and I was still practicing Kundalini. And then I remember one time um, that I was in my room and I used to also talk to angels because now I had been told to talk to angels. I did angel meditations all the time, all the different angels, talking to all of them, you know, and the angels were mixing with the chakras, this angel for this chakra, this blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, well, I need this one because, you know, I am not, uh, my root chakra is not right because I, I don't have enough money in my life. And this chakra is not right because I don't have this in my life. And this one, you know, well, I have problems with my parents, so I need this. This one, you know, I, I'm afraid to speak to people. So it was just like everything. I would just buy into it. Um, so I'd continue with all of those things. And then I remember that one night I was home and, and because, you know, I was in bed and I looked up and I saw these like twinkling lights, like really pretty. And I was like, oh, are you an angel? Like, I want to see you. Like, are you an angel? And all of a sudden this thing turned into the ugliest thing. I remember what it was. And, and my first reaction was to give it the middle finger. I don't know why. So I'm lying in bed, looking up at the ceiling, and when it turned into the scary thing, I gave it the middle finger. And then it, like, it didn't have a body, but all of a sudden this, like, arm came out of it, and it started to, like, press down on me and push down on me. And, and I was, like, wanting it to stop, and the only thing that I remember that I repeated, which I had learned from Wayne Dyer, was I am that I am. So I was like, I am that I am, I am that I am, and I was like, light, light, I am that I am, I am that I am. Um, and I'm pretty sure I even called out to God because I was just so scared and wanted this to stop. So poof, all of a sudden it stopped. I snapped out of it um, because it was one of those states again where you're kind of like in sleep, but it's not a dream. Everything was the exact same way. Um, I got up, I turned the lights on, I put a candle on, I had sage because at this time I was using sage, which if you don't know is these little native Indian things that are, you know, you're told that if you do this, that the, all the negative energy is going to go away. So I just slept with the lights on that night. I couldn't even sleep. It was awful. So anyways, I went back to the healer and I told her what had happened. And she said, maybe you're not ready for Kundalini right now. You're, you know, don't do it. Don't do it anymore. And I was like, okay. So I didn't do it anymore. And I was trusting her. And then I got in this other healer that my aunt told me about. And we ended up, you know, we'd drive both of us like an hour and a half to just go see this lady because um, we'd feel better for a bit. So this was another thing about New Age is like, you feel better for a bit. You see a healer and you're like, oh, all my problems are gone. I'm, they're solved. I don't have a, this. I feel good. I feel it was like a temporary high. And then literally like two days after or even a day after you feel the same or worse. Um, and that would happen. Um, I was still living downtown and I, rem and I had like all these little like love and hope and, and joy letters that were placed in places in my place and I would take pictures of them because they would move. And I remember my aunt saying, she's like, aren't you, like, doesn't that scare you? That's kind of scary. And I was like, no, I would be scared if it was something mean, but I'm like, it's love, right? Like it's love, like it's nice. Whatever it is, is something nice. It's friendly. They're friendly, I would say. Um, and yeah, there was just, it, it was just interesting. And then I also, you know, at times because I was so busy at work and I couldn't, whatever, I would, I couldn't like relax or whatever, not work, but at my own work, I was hustling. I was constantly saying yes to everything. I had so much on the go. I had clients I was cooking for. I had clients I was training. I had, I was just doing everything. So sometimes I would just smoke weed. And, and then when I would smoke it, you know, that it would, all the spiritual stuff would intensify. And I remember this one time where I looked at myself in the mirror and all of a sudden it was like the pupil in my eyes turned into hearts. And it, it, I was just like, oh, it was just the angels trying to like love me. And it was just like, everything was about love. I was just like, I gotta love myself. These angels love me. They wanna, and I just kept with that. Um, but there was also a time that I smoked and, and it was like something was trying to attack me and it was like myself attacking me. It was really, really this weird experience. And I was just like, I'm not going to touch that ever again. Um, and again, I just continued with my meditations. I continued with everything I was doing. I would do vision boards constantly upgrading and changing them because, you know, I, I was like, oh, these things work like everything I want, I can get. Um, and they would, I would upgrade them. I started to buy crystals now. I started to sage more every minute I had. If I had a break in the day, I was meditating on the couch. It, everything, I was just everything. And physically my body was breaking 
And again, there was moments where I wasn't, it, it wasn't the eating disorder change and I just wasn't eating. Like there were times where I was just eating like a watermelon a day sort of thing. So I wasn't getting any nutrients and I was so skinny, so skinny. But I would just, on the outside, just was like, I'm super healthy. And I was, you know, had all these clients and they're getting all these amazing results and I'm getting people off of medication. So good at that. But at the same time, myself, my life was falling apart. But on the outside, you would never know it. You would never know it. You know, I'd go to a trade show because I worked for this, um, I was sponsored as a protein athlete. So I'd go with them and just look super fit. And But I was very unhealthy didn't have a relationship with anyone in my family except for my aunt um, and I lived far away from everyone so I wouldn't see everybody often I was just isolated alone and it just brought me deeper into that world I remember that that one friend that I had talked about she had mentioned ayahuasca to me and it was something that was always there like well this is something I need to try because I'm so broken inside that I need healing and no one else is helping me so th this is the thing if they say that you know I'm gonna die to myself and wake like come brand new then this is what I need I remember it, I was, it was mentioned to me and it was something like inside went ding you gotta do that and I was like okay so this is in the back of my mind um, but I continued with the yoga with the this you know like now I had angel cards because I had gone to this intuition course and I learned how to read angel cards so I'm reading my own angel cards um, continuing with after all of the practices, starting to build my own practice, starting to do, because now on, on YouTube I found different meditations for like a full moon and I was like, what's going to be full moon tonight? Okay, I got to do this. I got to light a candle. I got to write this on paper. I got to do a little circle here. I got to burn the paper. Um, so I was doing little rituals and I didn't even know I was doing rituals. Um, all these things. And then, uh, and then I remember uh, I... You know, I didn't feel comfortable in Toronto anymore. I lived in a building and I was always very sensitive. And in the, in the new age, they call it being an empath. So I could feel too much. Like I felt everything. It was almost uncomfortable. I could be around people because I'm like, I'm picking up their energy. I'm picking it up. It's too much. So it got to a point where I loved where I lived, but it was too much. Just too much, too much. And, and also I was like, uh, it was expensive to live where I live. Like I'm living this lifestyle, but I was burning myself out. I wasn't, you know, it was just me taking care of myself. So I was like, it wasn't the smartest thing to do. Um, so I moved to, I moved back to Bolton and I ended up renting, um, renting somewhere close to my parents, but not, but still not with them. Um, because again, like the last thing I would want to do is go back to my parents because they're the ones that made me the way I was and they're the ones that were the problem in my life. Um, so I was I moved back uh, to Bolton and it ended up being far away from Toronto, but I was still seeing the healer. So I'd go once in a while to see her. And now she was like, you know, um, doing more intuition courses and there's level one intuition, two, three and four. And she was like, you know what? She's like, I'm going to just pass you to number four. So I went from one to level four and I thought, oh, wow, you know, like I'm a. Uh, I'm, I'm up there like she said she's like you got these gifts like I do and I was like okay so you know like it it feeds your ego feeds that ego of yours and I was like okay and I got moved to level four um so I was going to this course I remember I went the first night and it was so scary like it was in the I remember it was like in a basement of a place it's just like honestly like a haunted house almost and I remember having that feeling of like it just didn't feel good and um, anyways, the course was like every week. So I, I had come back to Bolton and I already knew, I was like, oh, next week, I don't wanna drive, I don't wanna drive. I don't wanna drive down there because it was very far, um, like an hour and a half. And my cousin, um, I had told him like three days prior to the next session that I was like, you know, I was like, you can keep my car if you like drive, drive me down. Like I'll give you my car and you could do whatever you want and then you come pick me up. And he was like, okay, cool, no problem. And then the day came and I was like, oh, I don't want to go to this thing. And I was so tired. I was like, I just, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Um, but something inside of me was like, you paid for this course. Like, you better go. Um, and and my cousin called me like 20 minutes before we went. He's like, you know what? I, I don't want to go. And I was like, oh, like, okay. All right. I guess I got to drive down. And that one day... Um, I used to journal as well, which in the new age you're supposed to do journal and I used to talk to angels and Archangel Michael was, you know, the one that protects you and I remember that I wrote in my journal that day, Archangel Michael protect me and I never really wrote in the journal in the middle of the day, but for this specific day I did 
Um, so I was driving down to the intuition course and I looked to the side and I see on the truck big like one, one, one. And I was like, oh, I'm on the right path. You know, it's a sunny day. And I looked up at the sky and I was like, I'm on the right path. Like the universe, you know, I'm on the right path. Um, and I saw something else and I was like, oh, I'm on the right path. And then I was going to turn left. No, I was going to go straight where I always go. And something was like. A vo- I honestly it was like a voice inside like a not audible but almost audible where it was like you always go you always go that way like you should go this way and I was like no I'm gonna go the way I always go so I ended up going where I always go and then I was gonna make a left and boom I was like somebody who like they ran the red light I was making my left and I it, it just my car spun out I was out of it for a minute I don't know how long actually I just remember just being gone and like I was like clouds I remember I saw clouds and then I heard people screaming so I like kind of snapped back I was in the car and people were screaming at my car um, because I had just spun out and the car that hit me was going really fast where I wasn't even in second gear I don't think maybe I was in second gear um, and and I even spun out and I hit another car so just all, all this commotion going on the tow truck driver ended up taking me out of the car just in case my uh, airbag went off and and did further damage um and and then i just remember being in the ambulance and then in the ambulance i saw 444 you know it was 444 and i thought in my head again oh universe this is you right and then um in the hospital my hospital bracelet was uh it had this long number but in the middle of the number it was like 3333 and i was like oh universe like i know you got my back i know that this is this is you um and then the doctor came to see me and was like, before he did any kind of uh, like checking up on me, and, and he was like, your pelvis is shattered. Like, you, you just tell, right? Your pelvis is shattered. And, uh, and I had already before had like my hips, I had them fractured from my training. So I had already had all this stuff done to me, um, which again, like I don't want to make this dream way longer than it needs to be. But this specific, while we're waiting for me to get x-rayed, um, on my hips, my aunt called to, she had a meditation group at the time. And so she let, let sent them a message to, to meditate for me, pray for me sort of thing. And I was going to the intuition course that night. So I messaged the lady and told her, and that specific night, they were all going to learn about energy healing. So anyways, I had all these people that were focusing on healing me and sending me healing energy. Um, and sure enough, when I, I came, uh, but I got my x-ray and the, the doctor came back and he was like, I don't understand. He goes, it's not, it's not shattered. And I was still in pain and I couldn't walk. And I couldn't walk for a while, actually. My aunt was the one that, like, she, she took care of me. And again, because I didn't have a good relationship with my parents, I didn't even tell my parents I got into a car accident for two days. I didn't tell them. So, you know, um, this is just where I was, where you could tell, like, how it was just not a good place. And then I also believe that the universe was was the one that was doing all of this for me. Um, And this just, now I wasn't physically able to do everything that I wanted to do. So, you know, I was eating even less because I was like, okay, if I can't work out, I don't wanna make sure I don't get fat. So I gotta like eat even less and less. And then, um, you know, my meditations, I started to do more meditations. I remember I found this book at my aunt's place called like something about the, brotherhood and I learned about this this brotherhood and I was like oh you know it just was so like everything I needed to hear at the time and then um it was such a rough time physically and emotionally for me that I just went deeper into all the healing and self-help and and listening to all sorts of things and um you know it was a really long um almost year uh of of the healing where I couldn't do anything it was just like uh I couldn't, I couldn't even do yoga, which was supposed to be healing, right? I couldn't even do that because my body was just broken. Um, and so I started to do um, kundalini meditations without the physical stuff. And slowly I'd start to do little things here and there. Um, and again, more supernatural experiences, more... Uh, there was this other healer that introduced us to this thing called reconnective, reconnective healing, which was actually channeled by an alien that brought this healing modality that anyone could do so we're doing reconnective healing i went and spent 333 dollars to have someone do this to me um just all these things and then he also introduced us 
to uh, to this guy that was kind of like a psychic, but not a psychic. But he, you know, he did something with aliens as well. I'm not sure. And and he, uh, so I go to get this healing from this guy that I met. Um, and um, again, very weird. It's in his tiny little apartment in Toronto, and not such a nice area. And he's talking about how he, you know, abundance and like he, may, I can make so much money and all this stuff. And I just needed to do this little book that he was like telling me, you gotta do this little book. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this little book. And in the book it had scriptures in it. So it's, see how it twists, right? It's it's talking about like uh, in the Bible it says this, and this is this little abundance book, and you gotta do this for 40 days. And I believed it. But also this man who lived in this tiny little apartment and his family wasn't there when he was doing it and the bed was out in the middle, um, like a massage bed sort of thing where he did his healing. And I don't even know what he did because I closed my eyes, but he was just like, oh, you know, this, this energy's blocked here and this energy's blocked here. And then he's like, you know, you need to go, you need to go like buy a vibrator. And I was like, he's like, your energy's not flowing and you got to do this as like practice to whatever. So, so all of a sudden I was like, okay, um, believed him and I went for the first time to the store where I had never gone in before and I was like oh my god I don't even know what to do I don't even know what to buy but I believe this guy and so I went to do it and that was something that I would do like again I just was so blindly I, I thought I was so I felt so broken there was such a void inside of me that nothing and no one could fill uh, and I didn't I wasn't one to, to turn to men I wasn't one to turn to um like a relationship if anything I said to myself I'm gonna keep myself single because I know I'm so broken and until I can heal myself every relationship I have is not gonna be good so I'm not even gonna waste so I never dated I never did anything like that and I was like just healing I was just like I need to heal myself I was in this loop of like I need more healing more healing so I believe this guy and I started to do that um, and and then you know start to practice more kundalini and then um, I had posted on social media, you know, um, oh, I'm on a, because I was doing a Kundalini challenge for meditation for your solar plexus chakra, which is your stomach, because I needed more confidence. And this was the chakra for confidence. So I was doing it. And I was like, I'm on day 58 of like a 90 day challenge. And somebody reached out to me who was like my personal trainer's friend. And uh, he said, have you ever thought about psychedelics? And in my, you know, my mind, uh, in my mind, and I said to him right away, like, no, like I do yoga and I do meditation. Like I don't do psychedelics. It's not for me. Um, and then like a month later, I had a dream with this exact person that wasn't my friend or wasn't anything. He um, was like giving me something in the dream. And, and, and I, rem I remember I wrote to him and I was like, hey, I had a dream that you were or whatever. And he goes, oh, I think you're ready. And I was like, okay. So I went to his place and did DMT. And again, this was supposed to be super healing, like the way he told me. And even though back then I had a phone and I had Google and you know all this was available, I didn't Google what, what I was gonna do. I just trusted him and I trusted my cards, my angel cards, because I read the cards and it said, told me to go. So I remember, and he said, you know, bring yourself a little anything, you know, you could write intentions of what you want from the healing. You bring something that means that. So I, I went and I did it. I remember he, he, I had never even like smoked out of a bong or he even, you know, I didn't know what to do. And he's like, all right, he's like, you need to like do this. And I was like, I didn't even know how to. So he had to start it for me. And then he's like, you need to take a big breath and like hold it in. And I was like, oh, I have yoga lungs. I can hold my breath for a long time. And I remember I breathed in, I held this thing in and all of a sudden it, I was gone. I was physically gone. I was out of this world and I saw these lights and I saw these, these like, they were not people. They were not anything that I had seen before. And I was instantly scared and instantly I was like, I want to, I want out, I want out. Like how, do, like, where do I go? Like I didn't have a body anymore. I was like, I don't know, where do I go? I want to get out of this. And it was so scary. And it was, it felt like I was gone for a thousand years. It didn't feel like, apparently it was 15 minutes that I was gone. And I went through all these different things. Um, and you know, at one point I was just shapes and colors. This is all I was seeing. And it was, I was like, okay, I guess I'm not a body anymore. I guess I'm in a different world and this is what happened. And then I went to another world. Um, and it was like, I'd keep passing on to these different worlds. And, and then I saw these little things again, they weren't people, but they weren't, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was. It was these little things and, and they were telling me to like, go like this. And I was like, well, what is this? And, and, and then I smiled. And when I smiled, everything got really light and pretty. 
Um, and then I looked over at the corner and it was like all dark. And then when I, you know, when I got, I got scared and as soon as I got scared, everything got dark again. And then boom, I passed somewhere else. And all of a sudden I was at my parents' place and I was in the fetal position and I could see myself in the fetal position and my grandfather who had passed away and my mom and my dad and my brother, they were like, oh, she took too much. She took too much. She's gone. She's dead. And then from there, I passed on to somewhere else and it was all light. All of a sudden, no one was a body and we were just all light. And it was like for that moment, it was like I knew everything there ever was to know. And and then I, I heard him because I still I couldn't see what was going on in the real world. I was still in this other world. And I heard him say, take a breath. Um, and I took a breath. And when I took a breath, it felt like... <gasps> I just experienced this thing like I felt this thing in my body that I had never felt before and it was almost like um, I, I don't want it to, to, to get this thing like going the other way but it was like a full body orgasm that I felt and 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 he was like that's your kundalini like he's like you just breathe right and every time I could just feel that and it was just felt like the most amazing feeling in the world that I was just like oh my god what is this boom then I was back and it was gone and I was so confused scared and now I was ashamed because I was like I don't do drugs and I just did drugs like I've smoked you know weed before but I'm like this is like a psychedelic like what did I just do and I was so scared so ashamed didn't know what to do like and then I'm driving home and I was just scared I was like googling like what, what, what did I do what did I open oh my goodness so scared um anyways I just didn't really tell anyone about that and kept doing my little abundance book and kept wanting money um and and then, uh, you know, Facebook, because Facebook is our friend, right? I, it suggested to me, because Facebook knows you so well, an ayahuasca retreat in Costa Rica. And I was like, all right, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. And I booked myself a trip to go. Um, and I remember I bought the ticket and I booked the retreat center and, and I went alone. I didn't tell anyone what I was doing. Um, and I remember that, so the one thing that happened is Costa Rica, like I was, to get to Costa Rica, I had to go to San Jose, Costa Rica, and I bought a ticket, and you know, I had a connecting flight, and I was in Houston, and the flight that I was on was late to get to the connecting flight, so there was going to be someone that worked at the airport that was going to guide you to which gate you had to go, so she looked at my ticket, and she's like, oh, California, and I was like, no, I'm going to Costa Rica, and she's like, no, sweetie, you're going to California, and I was like, no, my retreat is in Costa Rica, oh my goodness, so I had to run to customer service with my, this is the first time ever that I traveled with just a carry-on. Um, so I, I went um, with my carry-on and my yoga mat and I ran to customer service and I remember the ladies because they were trying to convince me to go to California. They were like, you know, they have beautiful vineyards and shops and I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, maybe that's where I'm supposed to go. Maybe that's my adventure. Maybe that's where the universe is pulling me. And then I was like, but I need, either way, I had to decide within five minutes because both planes, the one that was going this way and the one that was going this way, were going to take off. And then they're like, you've got to decide right now. And I remember like she had long nails and is typing away and she's like, you got like five minutes to decide. And I was like, oh. and I was like, okay, no, I'm just, I got to go to Costa Rica. Like this is what, I, so I gave her my credit card. I had to buy a whole new ticket, spending money that I didn't even have just because I'm like, I got to go get this healing. And then I went um, from Houston to Miami, Miami to, to Costa Rica and, um, I remember on my last flight, the lady that was sitting beside me was like a white tantra, practice white tantra, which is another bit of like kundalini side of things. So I instantly was like, okay, I felt safe, you know? And she also had to go somewhere four hours away. She was like, you can stay um, at the same hotel I'm staying if you need to. And I just felt safe. Um, and then I left, uh, you know, got my, I didn't have to wait for my luggage. So I left the lady and I was gonna go wait outside and I get outside and there's a sign and it says Lorena Santa Cruz and I was like, well, I'm in Costa Rica, maybe somebody else has my name, but I was like, that, that's me. So I go up to the guy and he was from the retreat center. So they were gonna pick up the people that were leading yoga um, and and so I got to go with them and I was like already I was like wow look at the universe like this is exactly where I'm supposed to be I'm like one of the dreams that I had I'd always watch movies and I know in a movie you see they're holding a sign I'm like how amazing would it be to go somewhere and they're holding your name up so I had that experience so right away I was just like wow but still just very you know and alone going through these experiences I don't know what is what and it's it's nighttime over there and I'm meeting this lady who's like, this is where you're supposed to be and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then we had to drive four hours to get to where the retreat center was, which was in the jungle. Um, so 
we we did and I did we didn't get there till like three in the morning so everything is like pitch black if you don't see anything I go into my little cabin I have no idea what my cabin looks like or anything or what anything around me looks like and then I remember waking up the next day and I'm like this tiny little cabin that just did I don't even know how it was like up properly <laughs> and then I go out and I mean it's beautiful like I'm in the jungle um, and there's this little like outhouse sort of thingy uh, where it's the bathroom so I go there and it's not even like a functioning bathroom it has like a bucket with sawdust and and, and then you go there and I remember like I went to go I'm like okay I'm gonna go to the bathroom and I when I closed the little door it said no not no only number two and I was like oh I just got to pee I'm like <laughs> so I go back outside and I like look for someone and I'm like I like where do I go to the bathroom and they're like I was like oh okay so this was like again another like uh initiation to a whole nother world where I was like okay like I guess I gotta be comfortable really fast with these things um and I was the for one of the first ones at the retreat center so I which I liked because now I got to meet everyone that was coming um and I was reading my angel cards for them and you know build these bonds with these people and a lot of us were going to be newbies to ayahuasca you know we, we were going to be taking this psychedelic and we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into and um and yeah, so so that was that. And we learned more Kundalini. We did more meditation. We did all these things. And then at the end of the week was going to be the ayahuasca ceremony. And I remember it was like such an eerie day. Like there was just this like presence of something that everyone was like more quiet, more like, I don't know, it was like fear, you know? And then at that night, you know, everyone's getting ready and we're all dressed in white, like completely dressed in white and we go to the temple because that's where they served it. They had a temple specifically for the ayahuasca and for yoga, but they set up the temple, you know, lights, they had an altar, it had another altar at the entrance. And um, I remember walking to the temple and my heart just beating like out of my chest, just nervous, because this, it looked and felt like not right. And, uh, and then the one thing that was shocking also was that the retreat center had opened this up to the public. So people that lived in Costa Rica were also able to go to this thing. So, you know, our retreat, we had built a bond with these people. You feel comfortable with these people who have been there for like all week kind of preparing for this. Um, now it's these other people and apparently with ayahuasca you just kind of don't know what to expect that like you could lose control and it was just like i was like oh my goodness so that was scary um and then also they you know were there's mantras that are sung there's prayers in portuguese and 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 in hebrew because he was from israel so there's these songs that are being sung and, and you don't really know what you're singing um and and we don't know and we're also praying to uh grandmother ayahuasca like this was a thing like it was just it's almost like you're you're honoring it you're worshiping it sort of thing it was very weird and then um so i took it had an experience but didn't have like i didn't think of any kind of enlightening and i could just hear other people's experiences i was mostly nauseous um and i actually did have a very like profound experience that first time of like what was going on within me but i was more focused on everything around me and i could hear people screaming crying everybody was like throwing up i didn't throw up um but what i really did feel was that i didn't belong there and i just felt that and i remember looking at people and i just ha was like afraid and i was like i don't belong here i don't belong here like i i, I looked at everyone dressed in white and i was like i'm like what am i like what am i doing um it felt like i didn't belong it was very weird and then once this experience is over you know there was there was another ceremony coming like the next day or the day after but you wake up the next day and you're like just like what ha what just happened what did i just do and then you know then everybody wakes up because you're in the temples there's all these mattresses everyone's uh sleeping out there dressed in white with like puke everywhere and it was just really weird but then they have to close the ceremony so there's a way to even close it and you have to sing and you have to just it was very 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 bizarre i didn't know what like what to make of it and then uh, yeah, and then what happened after that like how did you end up um Get into that breaking point. Oh my gosh! Well, that this was the thing. It was like because now I was in Costa Rica, and and then from there I even went to. It, it just brought more new age things, more more people, more things that I hadn't even known about. And I heard there was this festival going on there, and, and this festival was like 
um, if you're in Costa Rica, like you're meant to go to this festival. The festival was sold out and um, I ended up getting a ticket to go and it was, it was again very scary very scary I was super sensitive so I could just feel it was like darkness it felt like just darkness and I felt like I didn't belong and I found a friend who um, that I was able to you know we were into the healing world whereas everyone else that I met from the retreat center had kind of gone off these people wanted to do acid these people wanted to do molly these people over here were doing DMT I was like I just want to be holy because I thought you know I was just into the healing I wanted to just do healing I ended up staying in Costa Rica, living there, working there, and that was like my life. And again, on the outside and on social media, it's like, wow, look at where she is, what a life she's living. Meanwhile, I was so lost, so broken, didn't know what I was doing, um, and just confused. And I and I stayed there, um, and then there was another, you know, another ayahuasca thing coming up with the same group of people, and I, I didn't want to do it. And, and all my friends that I was working with at the time, they were doing it and they and I was like oh maybe I should maybe I, I don't know and I remember I had people from the other retreat that were coming back and they were they were gonna do it and I was like okay well maybe I should maybe I should and I, I just didn't know um, and still all of my new age practices had like really amped up I was now living by myself in the jungle um, and the night before the they the retreat thing was gonna start I had a dream with the guy that was leading it and it wasn't a pleasant dream. It was just like he came to me and almost like, and I'm like, well, I guess I have, in my mind thinking like this dream means I'm supposed to go to this ayahuasca thing, so I'm gonna do it. So I didn't stay at the retreat center, but I went for the ceremonies. And this was petrifying. Like it was like, I saw someone being possessed. I saw someone fall to the ground and basically die. And I don't even know how he came back. He had like blood running down his face. He was gone, he was white. I saw someone else walking like, a praying mantis like it was just things that you would see in a horror movie and I was living it there and it was like it was scary and I just knew that I didn't belong there um, and again I always I feel like um, although you know my family was Catholic that my mother's prayers were working for me because she knew what I was you know into this world and she was always praying for me um, and my uncles as well that were Christian, I know that they were praying for me. Um, so I feel that those prayers really protected me from all the stuff that I was in. Um, anyways, I, I ended up coming back to Canada for a bit and uh, just never okay, never okay. Would go to healer to healer to healer. I had the, the medium lady who said, you know, what did you do in Costa Rica? She's like, because I can't even get to your angels. There's this dark thing that is over you. And, so just all these things and I kept getting deeper into that world and deeper into my kundalini and I was teaching kundalini and I was continuing with this and then I was having, you know, I got introduced to a breath work um, and, I, and I started to do breath work and I went to this breath work workshop that was called rebirthing and this thing was like, really like, it was like now I don't need to take ayahuasca because now through breathing I could get to those states. I, I had this moment in this breath work thing um, workshop where these blue beings, these things, these aliens, these demons, I didn't know at the time they were demons, I thought they were like my alien family, like they like brought me, like they were like, oh like you're you're one of us now sort of thing and I was like oh and then the lady that was leading the workshop before she was talking about all this was kept going on about aliens about aliens and in the new age aliens were a big thing and my whole life I'd always been petrified of aliens like so scared I never wanted to hear about any kind of thing like that it was just it was one thing that I was super scared of but now I was getting to like oh I think you know we are aliens and like they're my family and like that's where I really come from and I'm a star seed so this brought in like just different it was just like layers layers of like dabbling into this part of the new age and this part of the new age um, and then I ended up in California and I was there for a cannabis retreat and I, I brought in now because I'm you know I was living in Costa Rica and I knew the medicine side of things so well now I need to bring the medicine to, to cannabis is another medicine and it's like ayahuasca but it's blah 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 so you got to treat the because when in my ayahuasca retreat they taught me that her spirit you know is called Santa Maria so there's da, 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 like we gotta bring in this and it's got to be ceremonial and 
So I just would get deeper and deeper into things. And again, like my life on the outside looked amazing. I was living in a penthouse in California on Venice Beach. It was like, oh, wow, right? Look at her social media pictures. And then going from there, then I went to Santa Cruz. And Santa Cruz was like this other beautiful place in California. And it was like, again, on social media, I was like, wow, look at her life. But meanwhile, I'm broken. None of these things have ever made me feel good i'd have again moments of of like a a moment of like oh oh like this is good you know you feel almost like and it, it wasn't like it wasn't anything like it wasn't real peace it was almost like you you this like pride like this like <gasps> i know everything like this enlightenment of like i'm so oh this is like and but you get little moments of that but then reality would sink in again and it's like oh my gosh and then I went to Chicago and and it, I literally was just traveling and I, on the outside it looked like amazing I had this amazing life I ended up coming back to Canada just like broken lost confused every time I came back to Canada I felt like I was worse off than before um because I was now I had opened up I don't know how many doors and I would just be you know and the relationship with my parents it was just like I always wanted to get away from them because again they're the reason that I'm like this they're the reason that I'm like this um and anyways I I was here in Canada and I was like okay I'm gonna start my personal training again and do this and, and that started and then I got a phone call from Costa Rica where I could go and like cook and train for someone there I was like all right I'm gone I was like literally gone a week later they're like we'll buy you your flight here you go so I went there again back into that world where it was now I was like I thought my thing was like okay well I'm a I am a witch but I didn't call myself a witch I called myself a bruja I was like oh it's my family I know it is because it I had heard we had brujas in our family um and and so I was like this is my calling I'm getting called to go to places and and I'm the one to cleanse it you know I I, I have that that ability so here I am thinking that I'm some kind of magic bruja that that just like goes around cleaning and I know how to it was like I knew how to set up certain things and very bizarre um even when I would cook I would be like sage over it and make it so it was, everything was like very and it was like weird because it wasn't like my mind was doing it it was like almost like this thing was like this is coming through me and I had already connected to I worked with a mushroom shaman that introduced me to like ancestors and like different ceremonies and now I'm working with my ancestors now because this is what my ancestors were doing um so I just again deeper into all these things and I didn't even know but this one time in Costa Rica, you know, I just, uh, we had a, again, living in this beautiful place in the jungle and our gardener's name was Jesus. And I, I remember that Jesus was like just this angelic being and, and he was a Christian man. And, and every time, you know, I was just like, I'd hear his name. It was like something inside of me was like, and, and he gave me peace. I thought it was the guy, but it wasn't the guy. It was every time his name was mentioned. Jesus um, and it was just like so already I was like I feel God was just being so patient with me and Jesus was trying to pursue me you know like trying to say I'm here I'm here you're just not looking and I kept doing all these things and then from Costa Rica I ended up having the opportunity to I, I, I was gonna do more traveling but I came to Canada for a week and uh, you know got to see my, my mom and didn't even want to see my dad because again I had such an awful broken relationship with him and I just thought he was the worst of the worst that I, I stayed at my aunt's I didn't even go to bid, like stay with my mom I, I, I stayed at my aunt's for less than a week and um, uh, I had a coin that said yes on one side, no on the other. And I flipped this coin up because my friend said, do you want to come to, to Bali? And I flipped the coin and I was like, do I go to Bali? And it said yes. And I was like, I'm going to Bali. And I booked myself a ticket that same day to go to Bali. I didn't even give myself a full 24 hours to pack. It was less than 12 hours. I was like, I'm going, pack my stuff, go to Bali. Um, and in Bali, it was like, again, like it was just more of like, the pictures look really nice on social media it's a beautiful post look at where i am sort of thing but i was lost confused isolated um also now my so the guy that that was my friend um there was all there's this weird thing between us because he was very much so like controlling and 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 um just weird and I just wanted love and at this point I was like this is the first time I, I kind of opened my heart to someone who was not the right person at all um 
anyways, I ended up staying in Bali by myself and he left and I was like living in a villa by myself. Beautiful. Like, you know, a two bedroom villa with like a pool. It looked amazing, but I was broken, lost, confused, didn't know, you know, so I amped up all my practices. I was like, well, I got to do more, more Kundalini. I got to do all the ones for my chakras. I got to do chanting. I got to do this. And then started to meet people in Bali that, you know, were even deeper into things that I was. And, and then uh, I did this thing called combo, which is uh, frog medicine uh, in the jungle. Uh, it's called the jungle vaccine. And, and, and I was like, I need this for health reasons because this one's not like ayahuasca. This one is for like the physical body. And I was like, I need this. So here I go to another ceremony that is very much like an ayahuasca, but it was a private one and they're drumming for me and they're whatever. And they, they burn five holes in my in my leg. Um, close to my ankle and put this frog a poison in it and then sure enough I just like felt this like rush of heat and I just started throwing up and it's you know by the end of it just like you're just you're done I threw up so much I didn't even know but then they also tell you drink two liters of water before so of course I'm throwing up anyways so and then they put this these eye drops that are called sananga which literally make you go blind and it hurts so much it hurts your eyes but all these things i'm just like i'm doing all these things because it's supposed to be healing it's supposed to be whatever and then they tell me they're like wow you were such a warrior like you stayed up the whole time even though you were and and that, again that feeds the ego of like yeah i'm a warrior like i could do this i could do that right um so it was just it was wild um and and it just, again, like I thought that that it, I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing at the whole time and getting introduced to more things while I was there. I remember that I, I met someone that I knew who had been living in Costa Rica. So we had mutual friends and I met her there um, and, and she introduced me and she invited me to like a cacao ceremony, which is again, they kind of do like almost like ayahuasca style, like it's a ceremony, but it's for hot chocolate <laughs> and it's supposed to be like heart medicine. So, um, went to this and, uh, I remember I got there and it was like this beautiful, beautiful house, um, overlooking like just like the most amazing parts of Bali. And I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And the people there all were like, not like, so in Costa Rica, like the people that, oh, most of the people that were there were like the struggling hippies, the ones that, you know, were kind of backpacking and didn't know where they were going to come from or go to or any of that. Whereas here it was like, well, these people had money. Like I needed to be around these type of people. But another thing that was really weird was as soon as I got there you know a girl started rubbing my arm and then like kind of like ah and I'm like this is weird and, and all of a sudden I saw everyone just kind of like you know just being very touchy-feely and I was like this doesn't feel right I felt very weird I didn't know anyone um, and they were all I always thought that I, the reason I didn't fit in was because I needed more healing. Well, obviously, I'm not comfortable enough with myself to do this. You know, I'm not comfortable enough to, to expose myself the way they do and, and all this. So that was in my head. I was just like, I need to do more healing. Um, while I was in, in Bali, I also uh, I had wanted to do a Vipassana meditation, which is like a 10-day silent, yoga, uh, not yoga, sorry, silent meditation retreat. And I remember I had like tried to do it when I was in Costa Rica, but I couldn't get in because they put you on a waiting list. It's like a thing. A lot of people want to do it. So I found one in Indonesia. So I had to fly from Bali to Jakarta and I went and, uh, and I did it. It was like 10, it, it was over 10 days. It was like a 12 day process, but like 10 full days of just your, your silent, your absolutely no eye contact with anyone. You can't read, you can't write, you can't listen to music, you can't exercise, you can't do anything but stay silent and, and you'd go into the meditation hall, it was called. Um, and they separated men from women and there was about a hundred of us. And at, you know, it was, it was, in, it was intense. Um, and you're eating very little, you're only given breakfast and, and lunch at 11 and, and, uh, and then nothing else the rest of the day. And you're waking up at 4.30 in the morning to, to meditate and all the way up until 9.30 at night and it was just in silence and again I'm thinking that this is mm -hmm. awesome because this is getting me where I need to get to and and um, and the point is you're, you're emptying your mind you're, you're supposed to completely just empty it you're not supposed to think of anything um, and I remember getting to moments of like yes complete emptiness where it was like wow like literally silence not a thought not a anything um, and that was a whole experience in itself and I remember when I came out of it when actually so I was still there and this was um, 
uh, different kind of, not Buddhist, but Hindu. It was, a, there is a, definitely a religion mixed into it. I just don't know which one. Um, and because there was even, before we would start, there would be a chant going in and there would be a chant coming out. Every meditation that we did, there was a, in, and I think it was Indian, a chant going in and a chant coming out, but it wasn't specifically Hindu and it wasn't specifically anything that they talked about. Um, and so when we were able to finally talk, you know, it kind of felt, it felt very loud and, and, and people were laughing and this and that. I felt, and again, being the sensitive one that could always feel things, like it, it got the, it was almost like the place had an, an, uh, its own spirit and that spirit got angry. And it, all of a sudden it was just this heaviness over this place. So I, I left the place um, and, and had to fly back to Bali and again, like it's almost like I've, I left off worse than I had gotten there. And, and now I was really confused as what I was going to do. And now I was going to go teach um, kids yoga somewhere. And I was just lost and confused. So I I'd, I'd was always in contact with my aunt. And she connected me to a healer in Florida that was able to Skype me. So I Skyped this lady. And the lady worked with angels and, the, and a pendulum. And she, um, she told me that because I had... Um, She's like, yeah, it's very dangerous to do that kind of meditation. She goes, when you're emptying your mind, she goes, things can come in. Um, and again, these are new age people that are doing healing, but they are telling me a, a truth of the fact that I'm emptying my mind. You're leaving an open home for things to come in. And so she cleansed me and did what she had to do. And then she also was like, you know, cleanse the spaces I was in and, and all this. Um, and then I went from, from there to... Um, to a Buddhist place uh, in in Bali, but like up north, because now I was going to be teaching kids yoga there, and uh, and um, and um, so uh, I went there to teach the kids yoga, and it was in a Buddhist temple um, that we were teaching them, and we were teaching you know kids that uh, there it was a like a called the Bali Children Foundation, like we connected with them, um, you know, kids that weren't well off and, and were sponsored, so it was really nice to see these kids and, and be able to be there, but again, it was just like teaching them things that we didn't need to teach them. Um, and then from there, I ended up, uh, again, once that was done, I had the opportunity to stay there if I wanted to, but that didn't feel right, so I ended up coming to a different part of Bali, um, and I met this lady, um, I was given her number because she runs retreats in Bali and she'll be able to connect you and she's the person to, to you want to connect with and I got connected to her so I was like okay so I met her she loved me and all of a sudden I was working all of a sudden I had jobs to go I could go to, like to yoga gigs and I was now living in a different place um, and again still like <laughs> inside here just broken or, and in here like lost confused uh, so far away from my family it wasn't like Costa Rica where I'm just like a three hour flight three hour four hour flight away now I'm like on the other side of the world where even if it's 12 o'clock in the day I can't call someone back home because it's a 12 hour dip like time difference so I was just completely alone over there um and now now I was working in a rehab recovery center with you know drug addicts and stuff like that and I was teaching them yoga and they loved me they absolutely loved me um I remember the manager was like um, he warned me the first time I went in and goes, just so you know, like, you know, the people can get, be very angry. They could be whatever they, they might not. And after my first, the first time I taught, he ended up calling me and he's like, what did you give them? Because they want more of you. And what I was giving them was what I had now learned, which was like, you know, a throwing in breath work in there I was throwing in Kundalini for them. I was doing things they didn't know I was doing to make them, uh, to give them that little bit of a high, you know? Um, so they were getting high basically on the spiritual stuff not knowing so they really liked what I was doing so I was working there living there and then uh, you know Bali has a very nice um, so a lot of people there that are lost looking and searching a lot of people that are all in the new age there's all sorts of coaches and everybody has like crazy following on social media so just so you know no look meeting these people and knowing what they like how they live and what they do they're all lost so it's like literally the blind leading the blind you know but we over here that are so lost and confused look at them and we see oh, this villa this 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 that i need to follow this coach so i'm going to buy into their programs but this is the wrong thing to do trust me um anyway so these are very like these 
amazing healthy uh, places to go eat. It's you know, it's Bali but not Bali. It's like you know people went in with money and created all these things. And so I'm I'm in a healthy place eating my and I'd go there every day just by myself. I didn't I didn't have anyone else. And I saw this guy once and and he, you know he said hi. So we, we, I said hi. Then I went there the next day and he was there again on his laptop and he had been there. From the, he ended up in Bali from the Maldives, and then we started talking once. And as we were talking, um, and he was beautiful, beautiful, but it was never romantic or anything like that. We were just talking, and you know, yoga came up, and and he had just taken a yoga, uh, re not retreat, sorry, a yoga teacher training to become a yoga teacher because he was a personal trainer as well. And he was so what he opened up for me was like the fact that like the guy that was teaching him, he was like, it was almost like he was against yoga. And I was like, oh, okay. So he kind of brought this thing where I was like, yeah, I kind of feel like, I don't know, like yoga is, especially being in Bali where everybody was like a yoga influencer. I just felt like it's not what I want to be. It's not who I am. I was like, I'm genuine and these people are not genuine. So he brought that. But then he also talked about Jesus and he said he had found a church there and he was going to church on Sundays. And I was like, oh, okay. But he was cool to talk to. So I just kept talking to him. But it brought Jesus into my life. And, you know, from that moment, I just felt that Jesus was, like, definitely present more than the gardener um, in Costa Rica. And, and now, uh, you know, he, it just it, it, it started to bring that. And I remember that I went to, I went somewhere and I opened up a magazine and, and it said Jesus. And I actually, it, it felt something like he was calling me that I cut out that picture in the magazine and I still have it with me because I was like Jesus came to me when I was so lost so confused um but I was still in Bali and I didn't even have like you know again my life over there looked amazing and I'm working over here and I'm doing whatever and I was making money now and I could have stayed there if I wanted to but um I remember that my parents had been gone uh on their vacation and my aunt sent me uh, a picture because my my dog at the time Rocky he he was like having his last day sort of thing and she was like you know he's alone and, and and I was like okay so I booked myself a flight and came back to Canada at the same time my aunt had started to um, find Christianity herself and so when I came back to Canada again you know it's always like starting from scratch and like worse off than I was before but now instead of you know going to a healer my aunt was like well here's the sermon so she introduced me to different sermons and I started to watch Elevation Church and Joel Olstein, which at the time was feeding what I needed and I thought like wow um, so I was getting this this feeling and I was also saying the prayer at the end and thinking like wow I'm saved you know and I have a relationship with Jesus again which I had and I was learning things about Jesus so it was kind of like a secret thing that I was doing every Sunday um, and um, but I was still very much so doing new age stuff although now it felt very right in my heart I felt that it was from God telling me don't teach yoga so I stopped calling it yoga. I changed, you know, my my name on Instagram because it used to be Lorena Yogini. I changed it. I changed on my website any kind of yoga. I just took it all out. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so I wasn't teaching anymore, but I was still leading chakra workshops. And I was still, you know, dabbling one foot in, one foot out. And then I remember that um, I have a like a client who became a friend and he um, married someone that is Hindu and um, anyways he came to see my aunt to get acupuncture on his knee for healing and then he came to see me and he was like uh, just checking in on you like how are you doing so I was like listen I had to tell him because I didn't know who else to tell like I was having really scary experiences I was like it was like there's demons or there's energy I would say like there's negative energy and they're attacking me like they're hurting me these things and I could feel them I could feel because the room would get really cold right so he was like okay he's like I, I can come help you cleanse because he was um learning about demonology because ever since he married this girl it opened up things and he started to be able to to he said fight demons and whatever so um so he came over and he helped me to clean my place and he also was like oh yeah there's things here and then as soon as he walked in i had this little altar because of course and being in costa rica being in these places they're like you need to have an altar so i had crystals on the altar i had this i had that i had this little statue of a hindu god and its arm was broken and my friend had given it to me its hand was off and he goes 
oh my, I need to take it. Like, I need to get rid of this for you. He's like, you can't have this here. He goes, he goes, the gods get really angry. He's like, you can't have this. So he took it and got rid of it. Anyways, he kept, he, he, while he was still here, he, he had this mantra playing and we were smoking my house out and doing all this thing and trying to go cleanse it. And he also said, do you practice the Kundalini here? And I said, yes. And I told him what was happening to me because when I practiced Kundalini, when I did all this, and now I didn't even have to practice it. As long as long as I put the, the mantras on, my body would start moving. And it didn't move in a nice way. And it didn't move like I was moving it. And sometimes I, you know, like my hands would do things or like my arms would go like to the back where it didn't even look humanly possible. And I used to joke around and say I was being possessed by a yogi. Um, and I was being possessed. I just didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he told me, Stop doing kundalini uh, chants. He goes, don't chant in, don't chant out. He goes, don't do it here. And he also said, listen, I saw your aunt, and I know that she did like um, that. That she like was bringing in Christianity. He goes, whatever you do, don't mix Christianity with uh, Hinduism, like with with yoga. He goes, because the gods get very angry. And so I was like, oh, okay, well. And I also just was, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna stop doing everything that I can only because I was getting attacked and like who could I tell about this like I was having things that were hurting me like you know like whether it was like all of a sudden it was like you know push me into the door push me into the wall I was literally getting these things doing this to me it was the weirdest thing so anyways stop doing the yoga stop focusing on all of that and and was listening to my sermons and continuing with that I ended up um, moving to the beaches and uh, again this is I, I I believe it was God that had done this because I, I wanted to, to go live down there and, and work as a personal trainer and I couldn't find a place to live everything was like super expensive I would have to live with like five people it was just like crazy and then you know my aunt was like you know we said a prayer and she's like god is gonna give it to you like if it's for you and then that same night i found a place and i had the whole place to myself and it was just like how did they even give it to me here i am like self-employed like didn't have like a good so it was just like wow this is god um and at the time i was really really into searching for him and he was my king i call i called jesus my king because now i was getting into this and and i the street I lived on was called Kingsway and I was like it's because I have my king and, and you know I was working at this personal training studio that was owned by Jehovah's Witness but I was able to talk about Jesus now and, and, it, and it, it was good and yoga wasn't a thing I was doing anymore um, and it felt good and you know my life actually did start to change for the first time where I was busy I was working I was working with people it was just it was good but I still had new age in me that I didn't you know I, I didn't know it was bad and I was still practicing in things I wasn't doing any meditations except that these Christian meditations that I found and I wasn't practicing yoga anymore however prior to this I had already um, set up that I was gonna lead a retreat in Costa Rica and I really didn't want to do it. And I was like, this retreat was just causing havoc in my life. Like, I was like, God, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But people had already started to pay for this retreat. And I was like, okay, well, like, I can't, I already, like, half of that money went to my rent. Like, I can't give them the month, a refund and just cancel this thing. So I ended up, you know, going to this retreat. And all of the things that I had stopped doing came back. You know, all of a sudden I was teaching them about kundalini yoga every day we were working on a different chakra we were doing all these things people were getting enlightened crying having these experiences and you know my life that everything that had started to been going good started to kind of come crumble um i came back i didn't have you know that i wasn't able to go work where i was so all, all of a sudden i was like self-employed again and i was just like what am i going to do with myself so what did i do with myself i went back to all the practices that I wasn't doing anymore and I was like this is my time like where I'm supposed to be doing kundalini I have a gift with kundalini like I need to do this um, and more mantras and more this and and more things were coming now and all of a sudden now not in a sexual way but but I started to practice kundalini with tantra and it was like you know and and, and breathing and all of a sudden I was I was like having like um, psychedelic experiences so then I would start seeing clients and, and I would stretch them but as I would stretch them it, you know we had a mantra playing I had like uh, it, I set up a whole ceremony specifically for this they would have these crazy experiences I'm like this is what I'm supposed to be doing and 
And then from there, another door opened and I was able to go to California and because these people wanted me to, um, it was with crypto and these people wanted me to teach them Kundalini. So I went and I taught them Kundalini. They had these crazy experiences. And again, I just was like, I'm in the right place. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And, um, and one day we were going to do a mushroom ceremony and well, it was just, they wanted to just do mushrooms, but me, cause you know, I have Brujita with me. I, and I actually had this bag that was made in Colombia by an indigenous tribe. And I used to be like this thing I called it Brujita. I was like, it has a mind of its own. It just makes me do things. It's where I keep my sage. It's where I keep my this. I had a vine of ayahuasca with me. So I told the people, I was like, all right, we're going to do mushrooms guys. And I'm going to make them for us. So I made chocolate mushrooms for everyone. Cause you know, the cacao, the cacao, I know the, the spiritual meaning of cacao. So I did this and I'm like, I had the, the ayahuasca vine. So I was like, I'm bringing the ayahuasca to this. And, and so I made the creative this whole ceremony for everybody and then we went on a hike and it's all very weird and it was very scary for me um, because and and I was still very lucid and very fine I didn't have anything the only thing was that every single one of these people looked like they were possessed by something they were moving the way that and it was only when this music came on this music they listened to electronic music and they, the way they danced to it just was not humanly possible to move those ways and they would joke and say they were aliens um, so I just felt very, you know, that it didn't feel good. And then the next day, actually, after that ceremony, I had an experience where it felt like I was, um, you know, like I could feel that whole thing of the Kundalini um, moving from the, like my, the base of my spine all the way up and it was like moving and it was like good, a good feeling. And then all of a sudden that feeling turned into like it was hurting me. It was hurting and I was like, and it was choking me and as it was coming up i could hear something that was like just let go just let go and and i did and i fell back and i remember it was like this light came into me and i just fell back and this is i haven't told too many people about this because i just think it's really crazy and weird but all of a sudden it was like i i saw jesus on a cross and i fell to the ground and i was just like i don't even know how um, because I just remember myself waking up and I had this little cross on my hand that I had a bracelet that was a cross that was given to me and I just was like kissing the cross and crying because I was just like oh my god Jesus 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 um, and I was just crying and crying and crying I had to just was like oh my gosh but then here I am with these people and they I just look crazy to them because I'm like they're like what are you doing in broad daylight we're in in, in the parking lot of somewhere like they're like we gotta go people are gonna call the cops so my experience had to stop there and we just got in the car and I had no idea what happened. I was like, oh my gosh. And then it went on to scarier experiences because now we were driving from one place in California to another. We ended up in a desert. And, and that night again, that electronic music would come on and every time that music came on, it got really scary and these people would move in a really weird, really weird way. Um, and, and again, I, I just was like, I'm safe because I have Brujita with me. Like, I'm just fighting these things off. I thought I, I was the one, like, cleaning these things. I don't know. Um, and, and then the, the next, and then I was, again, like, with these people because now I was the one teaching them this. And I was also, they were going to hire me for marketing. So I was like, okay. And I thought this was just wonderful. But at the same time, it was crazy. I was going through these crazy experiences and I didn't know who to tell. So I would tell my aunt and my aunt said, just be careful because these things are going to make it feel like it's from God. Because I remember now I still had Jesus in my heart now and I had God, but I was one foot in, one foot out. And so she said, just be careful because these things can disguise themselves and, and make you think you're having an experience with Jesus or with God, but they're not. Um, and then a couple of days later, I ended up... Um, all of a sudden feeling like these people are aliens, like these people are aliens. And, and, and all of a sudden it was like, I felt like I had a, a, a psychotic, ex not psychotic, I don't even know the word, but like I, these aliens were after me, you know, they were after me and I, I didn't know what to do. And I, I didn't have like a data a phone. I just grabbed my, my bag and I left and I ended up, you know, it was like walking on the street. It definitely, I, I have compassion for people now when I see them, you know, on the street, like looking so lost and confused because I thought I was being followed by aliens. I would hear, you know, that the, the, what's it called? Like the electrical lines. It sounded like they were like zzz, only when I would walk by and I was like, oh my gosh, like there are some things after me. Um, I was just so petrified. I ended up 
on a bus somewhere and then I ended up in Los Angeles by the airport and I was like I should just leave but I didn't I ended up going back and so I ended up staying there um, for just like maybe another couple days but it was just like just had this crazy fear inside of me crazy fear and I was like somehow I felt protected but I knew that what I was with was like scary like these people are aliens like they're full on saying they're aliens like one saying he's the captain of the aliens like it was just I'm it was just bizarre um anyways this was 2019 and then I remember um you know coming back and 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 again just being so lost so confused but now I'm doing marketing for these people and they're trying to fly me out like honestly every other week I was getting flown out here flown out there um, and finally I just had to say no and I left that and then I was like okay God like you know give me something God and I said I would never work in yoga again and I wasn't working with yoga um, but I had this workout that I would do and the yoga studio reached out to me and I started teaching it there and then I realized, because I have like marketing and that I've done before, that the studio needed help. I was like, this studio is struggling and it's like at the beaches in one of the nicest areas. Like, what's going on? And then I was like, listen. So she was like, I'm going to hire you as a consultant. And I was like, okay. But when I said okay, it was like, I'm saying okay, but I, it's almost like I was selling my soul for money, it felt like, because I knew that this wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And the, to, I did it for two reasons. A, because I needed the money to live, but also because there was this new age coaching business uh, that I wanted to sign, a program that I wanted to sign up for, you know. I wanted to be able to set up my own program so that I could now just do my own thing. So I needed the money to do this. So I said yes, and I was making good money, and I was, you know, I did, I, I did everything, but it was like I sold my soul. I was miserable. It was, you know, and my contract was gonna end March 15th, 2020. So it was like I was like, okay, well, March 15th, 2020, I am out of here. I'm going to Colombia or I'm going to Costa Rica, and I'm just gonna go recharge myself. And still in that new age mentality of, you know, I just need to heal myself. I need to go away because this is not for me and I you know, really wanted to get out of that whole thing and I wasn't teaching yoga but I was working for it and promoting it so it was like it, it brought you know physically like it's just everything everything was like not good and then COVID hit and when COVID hit it was like I I everything was like it, I just was like I'm done I'm done with this I can't do this anymore I, I stopped every spiritual practice and I was just like you know all of it to, 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 to just, I don't want any of it. And I remember um, watching, and I think it was Elevation, where they said, um, you know, if you really want to get get rid of demons, because again, I had felt all these presences always. I was, I was the one that was always cleansing anywhere and everywhere I went. And you looked at my bag and I had sage, I had palo santo, I had this, I had that, I had like all these things, essential oils, just to cleanse the area. Um, so it said, if you really want to get rid of demons, you got to play this song. And it was a worship song. And I was like, oh. so I had worship music playing in my house 24-7. And there was one room in my house that had a fireplace. And it was a room where I led ceremonies, where I would see my clients, and where previously I heard people would leave ceremonies. Um, and I used to call my house the shamanic house. Like it had its own, you know. So anyways, in that room specifically, once COVID hit, I didn't go back in there. And I had a speaker playing with Bluetooth and I played worship music the whole time. And worship music, I let it play all night just because it was the only thing that made me feel safe. But there were still things I was doing that, you know, were not of God. So I still wasn't there yet. You know, he was very patient with me. Um, I remember I was like, great, I'm going to do a mushroom ceremony. I did a mushroom ceremony on this specific day because it's a 444 portal. And I was still working with these portals and things. And... And um, anyway, so I did it, had the, didn't really have like an experience. And, um, and then the next day I went downstairs to do laundry and I don't know why I looked in this one area where it was like a little workstation and, and I saw something and I walked up to it and it was a, like a statue of Jesus' head. And I was like, I, so I took it and I was like, this is coming upstairs with me. Like I just felt Jesus' presence. So even though I was doing all these things, I feel like he was still just like calling me. And now when I did, you know, anything, it was always worship music. So even though I was doing mushrooms, I was doing mushrooms to, uh, to worship music. Mm -hmm. um, and 
yeah, I just went down like every <laughs> every hole that you're not supposed to and opened every door. Um, and my life again was like, yeah, worship music helped me feel safe, but I was still doing constant saging. I still never felt safe. Um, and it felt like darkness ever like when COVID hit, it was like, you know, I was so sensitive. I was like, I can't, I couldn't even go outside because I could just feel like I felt, I felt allergic to everything. Like my body felt like I'm like, I can't be around anyone. Like, this is just crazy. Like the fear, you know, the fear, the fear energy. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so it was just crazy. And then, um, I was alone. I mean, I was always alone and I like to be alone, but now it was like you're forced to be alone because of COVID. So I, I was really missing people. And I also, my eating disorder that was gone came back with a vengeance, like a vengeance. Like now I was ordering food like four times a day and, and just like making myself so sick. And, and I was like, oh no, I need, I need to stop this. Like, so I, I, I subleased my place and ended up coming to my parents' house for like a month vacation because it's like, well, now I don't have to do anything, right? I'm not working, I'm not doing anything. So I came and it was like very nice to be here, but I was still doing, um, you know, I was still dabbling in little things. I was, I was doing um, journaling and I, now I stopped doing yoga, kundalini yoga, but I was doing qigong, which is basically Chinese kundalini. Like you don't do chanting, but you're still working with that same energy spirit. Um, they still do breath work they still do things so I was doing things but still like it in my own mind just doing my own things and still something didn't feel right about that um, and I you know I stayed with my parents and my niece and my nephew so I got to really just have this family experience that I didn't have for so long and, and it was really really nice and and, and it, it was just nice like I was like wow um, also I, I didn't even mention but I broke my foot at the time that's actually why I ended up coming for because I had to I needed help I couldn't live by myself and well I could but it was hard to like you know cook go to the bathroom go here go there so they were like just my dad was like I'm just gonna pick you up and bring you home for a week so I did got myself some crutches got myself a boot um, and and so just that ex that family experience of like oh my god I felt so loved and so cared for I was like yeah I can't believe I've had this all along and I never you know here I am like not a, not appreciating it but the opposite of not appreciating it is like being mean to them so it, you know it, that opened up and um, anyways I, I you know COVID was still very present in the summer and I still was in that mentality of wanting to get away wanting to get away so. I, I said I was gonna go to, to Australia and I'm like alright I'm gonna rent my place out at the beaches for six months uh, for seven months and go to Australia and the Australian borders had opened um, been opened again and I, I rented my place out and literally the day that I said yes and accepted the money they closed the Australian borders and I was like oh, what am I gonna do I was like oh my gosh I have nowhere to go what do I do what do I do so I did like you know get everything out the lady moved into my place and I came to my parents place and just it was like worse it felt like basically every time I came back from another country where I was like back to square one but worse you know and now I'm feeling all this energy so I'm having to do like cleansing in the bathroom and I would go and and, and again just like at this time I was so overwhelmed and so anxious and 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 suicidal thoughts and and it just was like I was so I was in such a dark place and like nobody knew but it was it was rough it was so rough and I, and I, I didn't know I just didn't know what to do and and it was like I don't know how I made it through that month um, I thank worship music and I was listening to sermons on Sundays um, but I, I don't know how I made it and I was still you know like lighting sage and, and smoking cannabis here and there only ceremonially because this is what I needed to do and taking you know Epsom salt baths with all these essential oils to purify my body um, I got introduced to someone else that would go to the river and put incense down to the ground to for the land I just all these things that I was still and I don't know how I survived I don't know how but finally I remember um, I remember that, you know, I, I just was done. I was, I, the overwhelm had become so intense and the anxiety and the suicidal thoughts that I was just crying out to God and I was just like, I can't take this anymore. I can't, like, I can't take it. I'm just, um, it was too much. I literally just wanted to, out of this world, out of this heaviness that I was feeling that I was like, I can't, 
I can't anymore. And so I call, I cried out to God and I was like, please God, like, please God, just take this away. I can't anymore. I can't do it. And, um, I literally, it was like, it was like something was lifted off of me that, that I had been carrying since I was a little girl. And it was the most amazing feeling and it was just gone gone in that moment and I was I you know and, and from that moment I was delivered from things like my eating disorder my anxiety my depression all these things delivered in that moment but it definitely wasn't you know rainbows and, and sunshine from there it was but from that moment the veil was lifted and and I got to see everything that I was doing that was wrong and I got rid of all my new age things um, I started to um, I saw testimonies online, New Age to Jesus, and I was just like, wow, there's other people that are experiencing what I've experienced. And I remember I would reach out to them and I'd get crickets back, nothing, nobody. And, and I didn't know who to, who to reach out to. I didn't have any of that. So it just forced me to build my relationship with God even more. And, and I, I, you know, not, I didn't have my parents, I didn't have this, and I, I was like a baby, I had to, you know, I bought a Bible, I had to learn all these things, I got rid of everything, I got rid of the vision boards, I got rid of all the angel cards, all the books, and it was like thousands of dollars, but I got rid of all this stuff, because I just wanted to be closer to God, and I just built that relationship with Him, and honestly, although it wasn't easy, I had the peace that I had inside, it didn't matter, like I was, there was no going back to anything, I... And I hold on to that, you know, he, he, the peace that he gives me um, just made it all worth it and, and it made me continue and, and I was alone but I wasn't alone and I remember I would talk to him and say, I know, I, I know I'm not alone because I have you but I did used to say, I was like, but I would love a, you know, a friend or a Christian friend that I could like connect with and, and stuff because I didn't have anyone, I didn't know Christian people. How oh, very new to me. So, and then I remember, um, it was like January now, and, and my friend who I had taught yoga with said, you know, we were talking and just kind of catching up because we had not see, talked to each other for so long, and I didn't really open up about, you know, my new life, um, but she opened the door a little bit saying that she felt these dark presences in her place when somebody moved out. And her friend told her play psalms, play like just play. And I was like, oh, I was like, okay, I was like, okay. and I was like, that's amazing. And she goes, listen, she goes, I don't know why, but we have a prayer group at nine, and, and you should join. And I was like, please, like, like add me, like make sure you add me. Like I remember, I I think I texted her like five times, and I was like, don't forget to add me. So they had a WhatsApp group, and and a prayer that was on at nine. And I remember like just being in the bathroom, just like in the shower just crying crying saying thank you thank you because i knew that i was getting like you know some it was something from having had nothing but just just him um and then that opened up and then from there you know i remember reaching like talking to the girl that was leading it and i told her like that i wanted to get baptized and from there that opened that and 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 i also was doing my own i would do fasting and praying myself and and I had a book about fasting, praying, and deliverance, and I was trying to do, I guess, self-deliverance. Um, but I knew that I needed help because I had uh, just I had opened way too many doors, and and I knew that I needed deliverance. I remember sending my aunt things, and I was like, "We need deliverance. We need deliverance." And um, I had Googled online, and there was one in Woodbridge, a Jamaican ministry that that did deliverance. I was like, all right, this is my thing. I was like, you know, I, I love reggae. I was like, I love Jamaica. It was one of my favorite places to go. I was like, I, I guess this is where I need to go. This is where I belong. Um, and, uh, and the same day that I was going to reach out to them, my aunt texted me and was like, hey, my friend Laura got deliverance, um, and, and this is the pastor's like number, and we both of us called on three-way and we spoke to pastor reinhardt and um and set up our you know our fasting and, and deliverance and it was um it was an incredible uh but even getting to that point because i had built that relationship with with god i was very even discerning with that and i was like god is this the right person to, to do this with like am i supposed to be doing this like is this something right i don't know um, and I, I ended up doing it and, and it opened up, 
it, first of all, it, it delivered me from so much, but it opened up so much that I didn't know that I, you know, I had all these doors open from, from even uh, things that I didn't know, like things like being a baby and being taken to a witch doctor as a baby, having that little bracelet around my ankle from being a newborn from that that's supposed to be for the the evil eye like all these things not, let alone all the ones that I willingly opened like things that were done that I didn't even know so it was just um, an amazing experience and then even from there I still was very you know it, it was not it was not rainbows and, and sunshine I had you know this year of like it felt like walking in the dark I still didn't know what I was doing in my life where I was going but the peace within was the only difference you know and um, and and also that whole time I felt like it was like God gave me like it was like he restored the relationship with my family like the relationship with my mom like it was like all the years that I missed out it was like God just gave them back to me and it was amazing um, so yeah so that was amazing and then even so <laughs> like um, and, and not only that, but even my mom's faith has grown so much. So like we, you know, to be able to, to talk about that and she would keep, I, when I didn't have any, any friends or anything, like my mom would keep me kind of with like that, that faith. It was like, she's just like, no, you give it to God because I would get desperate sometimes. I'm like, yeah, my mom, I'm not working. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing that. Like, what do I, and she's like, just you like, no manos de Dios, right? And you're, you're good. And then the peace would come back and. So I had to persevere with that, and then you know, I was so blessed to have uh, you, Reinhard, that that would check in on me because it wasn't easy, you know, it wasn't easy. But I continued, and I would uh, consume the Bible as much as I could, and I would do my own fasting and praying. And I still didn't belong to a church, and it was still lockdown time, so I didn't have that. I didn't do connect groups. I didn't know anyone except you <laughs> and my aunt, and still just do it you know I joined that prayer call every night it was every single night 9 p.m. because it was like kind of like a lifeline for me of at least I was seeing other people that yes we were praying together and it felt amazing um, and then I remember even when I it was came time when they were opening up again and I had the ability to go to the church I was like no god like do you want me to belong to a church like am I supposed to I don't know I was afraid I was always so isolated I didn't want to go put myself in another situation like all the new age because all the new age stuff I remember I always went and I always felt uncomfortable like I didn't belong like I wasn't supposed to be there but I would go to these things anyways because I thought so it was very like even to get out to the church was like it took a little bit of like okay no I'm gonna go and see what this is about whatever um, and it was amazing it's been the biggest blessing of my life to have it feels like a family now you know it feels like something I never experienced before so what would you say to someone that uh, maybe just coming out of the new age and uh, maybe just in that process of other uh, Knowing Jesus or being religion, what would you tell someone? I would say first of all that it that that it is a process that 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 it's not like a, a happy magic pill that is gonna take care of all your problems, that you have to continue to have faith and to to grow in, in the Lord and also to to really be discerning about where you're getting uh, information from. To be really discerning because just like in the new age where you know you could be led by this guru and this healer and this teacher that there could be other churches or pastors and they claim things but you have to really build your own relationship with the holy spirit and with god to be able to know what is really from god and what is really not from god because you can continue to go down that rabbit hole of like needing a healer but now you're needing a pastor or now you're needing this deliverance and you're just, it, it, you need to build that relationship with God yourself. You need to build that relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and, and learn to hear their voices and know what, it, what is from, from the Holy Spirit, what is from God and what is not. Um, and and that's, that's one thing. And then also, it's not a magic pill. It's not like, I know a lot of the girls that had reached out to me um, have been saying um, that they get very discouraged because they hear... Um, they hear 
uh, testimonies online where all of a sudden people's lives change and like yes in that moment when I fell on my knees and I had that experience with Jesus my life changed because there was no going back but it did not get easy I was like walking in the dark for like a, it felt like forever just walking I didn't know what I was gonna do I didn't know it, it wasn't this this like magical like all of a sudden my life changed I got no it was like I had to continue and, and persevere and and you know and slowly God starts to reveal slowly as you build that relationship with him it's like any relationship where it's like he then starts to show you things and heal you from things and you know like let's remove this little bit of resentment here and this and then so many things and layers and layers and layers of of everything start to come off but it's a process and from my own personal experience I don't think this process ends I think that as long as we're here on earth we're gonna continue because we are not perfect and we live in the world we're not of the world but we definitely live in the world and you know I think it's a continual process and you know the mentality of it's gonna be fixed in one deliverance or gonna be fixed right away um, is not necessarily helpful you know um, and I also pray that the people that are coming out of the new age that they get the proper guidance because you're so vulnerable because you just realize like when you first realize how demonic and everything that you had been playing with you just want like you're like I need something like I need it now I need it now like I need it now and then I didn't even get into talk about you know when I was first when I had that first experience then um, the attacks came very strong attacks like I remember feeling like I was gonna get like I'm not gonna get like it was at night and this dark presence came and started to choke me in my bed and you know um, I needed prayer I didn't have anyone and I remember told my aunt and my aunt um, called the a minister that she knows and they prayed over me on FaceTime because we were in lockdown but I just you know it, it was it was scary um, and then I, you know once I learned that there's power in the name of Jesus and I used that I wasn't afraid anymore I mean I kept the light on sometimes because these things would come and attack me at night and, and I remember they'd come into my dreams and attacking my dreams but I came a point where it wasn't too long after that in my dreams all of a sudden I was the one doing deliverance to people um, and I didn't even know what deliverance was at the time but I was doing it so I don't know I just know that God God saved me his mercy his grace that I didn't do it on my own and that he had definitely had patience with me because he was always there and I just kept going this way and that way and that other way but it didn't go down the straight and narrow that was always there for me one last question. Okay. <laughs> just, I'll put it separate from the video, okay? Tell me what, what is it that drew you to IGO or what is it that you like about IGO? Or how has IGO helped you? Okay, so IGO is... It's, it's so different from anything I experienced. So all I ever knew about churches was that one experience that I had when I was younger and then, you know, Catholic churches. And then I also went to Elevation Church once. And it was very, you know, lights and, and this and, and very not personal at all. And it just didn't feel, it didn't feel good. Not that you're going by feelings, but there's just something in your spirit that it just didn't feel right. Whereas I go, I had never in my life met a more humble human that was willing to just you know it, it it just felt so genuine to to meet a to someone to a, an actual pastor that was a real pastor not just someone that wanted to sit on the throne and have people just like you know go to him like no he was you know Reinhard you've been uh, incredible in my journey like I didn't have anyone at first and, and you kept checking in on me to make sure like you know that I was okay and you, you gave me the proper guidance and like telling me don't just trust me like you know like build your relationship with the Holy Spirit make sure you're doing this like make sure you're not dabbling in this sermon and this sermon and following too many pastors because they might confuse you like you just gave me the proper guidance that I needed um, which was amazing and then you know, I was a little bit nervous about then coming to the church because I knew you as a pastor were amazing, but I didn't know the other people, and I'm like, how are they going to receive me? How are they going to... And, you know, it was the opposite of anything I guess I could ever think of, and it was just all these open arms, these open, loving, non-judgmental arms. Um, so it's it's been incredible, and now it's like a, a family, like an extension of, of a family that is just... 
Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. It, it, if you could uh, pray for someone, okay, that is in the room, you know, I want you to take a moment to look at the camera, okay, and just say, if you're this and this and that, blah, 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 if you if you are right now still one foot in and one foot out and 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 lost and confused and still have that void um i want to pray for you because i i know that i was there and even if you have just come out of it and you're you know you're doubting because of the fact that it's it's hard and you're getting attacks at night and you know anxiety is still there and all these things i want to pray for you because i was there so um Father, in the name of Jesus, to whoever is watching this right now, God, I just pray that the Holy Spirit, that you send your Holy Spirit, Lord, to just come and, and, and touch their heart, Lord. Touch their heart and let them know that you are real, Father God. Let them know that, that, that your presence is real and that you've always been with them, Lord. That you've been with them and that the, the mind is going to try and play tricks, Lord. And that let them know what is from you and what is not from you. I, I pray that the Holy Spirit is just going to let them feel what it is that, that it's like to, to, to really know you, God. God, to really know you, Jesus, to, to have you in their heart. And Father God, I just pray that whoever is watching this, Lord, that they that they can feel that they're not alone in this, that they're not alone in this journey, that you are you are there with them, Lord, and that you are going to guide them to the right people, and that you are going to guide them through this journey, Lord, that you are going to be there with them, Lord, and that, and that there is... There is light at the end of the tunnel, Father God, with you that there is light. And Lord, that you are the one that is in control and that also that they don't need to have this shame of what they did, Lord. Because you you knew what we were going to do before we did it, Lord. You knew that, that, that we were going to go into the new age and dabble with all these things, Lord. But that you are also going to use it for your kingdom and for your glory, Lord. And, and, and to, to continue to help other people see the truth. The truth that Jesus is the only way, the only way. There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way.